Minifly is the new super compact, extremely powerful Swiss army knife from Skahoy. It will help you with so many different control tasks in broadcast. You can use it in the field, on location, in your studio as a, an auxiliary panel. Uh, there are so many use cases. And in this situation, I've just hooked it up with a plain Blackmagic ATEM switcher, which is kind of the standard you can uh, compare many of these two because there are so many parameters we can set and it will show you how versatile this unit is. So I'm really excited about it and there's uh, not really a quick way of doing it, but I will do my best to get you through what this little device can do really quickly. So let's take a close up look at the unit. You see um, we have six buttons labeled one through six. And as I press these buttons, I am changing input sources on the preview row on my ATEM switcher. I have a cut button. If I press the cut button, I get a cut. I can also pull the um, uh, slider for having a fade transition made or whatever transition style is chosen. And we have a shift key right here. So if I press the shift key, you'll see that the row of buttons now has a different uh, color tone. And if I press three, I am now selecting a different camera. You can see that in the ATEM software just next to, if I press the cut button, you see there's now a cut uh, between that source and the one back here. So I actually have access to more than just those six sources sitting on these buttons. But the really cool thing is what also happens up here and what this switch, uh, sorry, shift key can do. Because it's more than just a press to change this one. If you press it on the side, you see that I'm now changing through four different modes of these buttons. You see here we have macro activation, we have audio sources, and then we have two positions. I can go forth and back. If I press the right side, you see that I'm basically toggling forth and back between the modes. So I am paging in this direction when I press this side of the button and I'm paging in the other direction when I press this side. And um, in the two default modes, let's go to this one, sorry. This one, I have auxiliary one and it says program one. Okay, so now let's pull up the ATEM software here and uh, we look at auxiliary one. I'm connected to a two ME switcher and you see ME program, ME one program is the source we have on auxiliary one. Now watch what I'm doing. I'm pressing the button on the side and as I press the button on the side, I am cycling the auxiliary one source. Isn't that just cool? This is called four-way buttons. And as I press the button on the sides, I'm able to cycle through settings and just imagine what this will do. It says media player one. We have volume master. We have uh, over here, this is just binary buttons, toggle buttons, but um, the excitement we have just um, managed to set up here for uh, selecting um, audio so uh, auxiliary sources. Look at media player one. Uh, I have all these stills in the media player and as I press this button you can see that media player one uh, cycles through the different stills that has been uploaded to it. And if I go to audio you can see as I press this one I am changing the master audio volume and if I press and hold it will go to the bottom, press and hold on the other side, it will repeatedly increase the volume of that. And now comes a small little pretty cool trick. Oh wait, is that the one? No, it's not on this button because what I did here was to pull out the master volume on this um, on, on the main screen, if you will. So if I go here, you see I have volume for the XLR channel. So you now see as I press the button on the side, I am adjusting the volume of XLR. Now I have media player too. So if I go to media, uh, pool here, you can see it's media player two I'm cycling around and I have auxiliary two for bars. Uh, I'm not going to show you that. But if I go to audio, now you see volume for channel one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I press the button here, I'm toggling audio on and off. Let's go to the audio tab. Notice I am now toggling on and off audio for camera two, on and off camera number one. And imagine what I will have, if I press on the sides, you see I am adjusting the volume now of channel two, all from a button. We call these four-way buttons and they are a new innovation from us. We think they are so cool and they just expands the 
utility of our universal broadcast controllers into the endless because you are now not fixed to a button press but you can have what we call encoder action that is we mimic what happens when you turn a knob uh, an encoder it's called which click 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 to the one side will adjust the value up or down or maybe change stills in a media bank and now you have that in small elastomere buttons on skyhoy panels all over the place so this is just so exciting and uh, you see it unfold right here so uh, and really powerfully shown for setting audio uh, volumes and uh, combining it even with a button press on the lower edge which will turn on and off the audio source now we saw the same thing for the shift key so as i press the shift key on the edges you see how i cycle through these things so here we have macro playback let's try to play back a macro so it's playing back here the macro is playing back and now it stops okay so uh, we have seen macros. So that's it. I want to go back here. We have uh, keyers on and off. Let's just quickly go to here so we can see. Okay, I'm turning a key on and off. And here I have another key I'm turning on and off. Great. We have fade to black. Great. Okay. So um, let's see if I go here. You can see that I set up field source and so forth. These are just tiny details. There's one final thing I want to show you. Well, actually, there are a few. Uh, yeah, one thing is the cut button also says auto. So how did we do that? How does that work? Now, um, it's cut, 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 cut. If you press on this edge. Now, if you press on that edge, it's an auto transition. Why not use the four way buttons in that way? So you have two functions on one key. And now you may think, oh, but then, um, if you press from the top and then it might have an auto transition and not a cut and so on. Well, that's true. If you don't know that the key will detect button presses on either edge and react to them differently, yes, you will have a problem. But I am pretty sure that most operators will quickly learn that. And it's really perfectly natural to just touch the buttons on the edge. So uh, the four-way buttons in itself are really easy to operate. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So um, let's see what happens if I press the upper edge of the shift key because then we have what we call hijack mode. What happens now is that those six really nice OLED displays that will show you what these buttons normally do, they are now assigned temporarily to show us what source these buttons are mapping to. So now I know this is camera one, camera two, and so forth for the preview bus. So if I release it again, we are back to having displays reflect the function of the upper button row. Again, just watch. As I press, it will now show you what is on this one. So. What you may think now is, um, now if I press the lower edge of the shift key, I, I changed which sources are on this row. And yes, you will see what these sources are if you press the upper edge of this key. Another thing that you may have seen or noticed is that as I press this one, I'm actually toggling between what these indicators do and also the LED bar next to the slider. And yes, that's true. Right now, these indicators will reflect which audio channels uh, are turned on for which cameras if i press it uh, as a toggle on and off it will now go to audio meters so we actually have volume control and we have volume monitoring in the same unit let's just go to the audio interface and you can see that the um the the monitoring we have right here the vu meter that we see uh in this led bar uh, sorry, I need to go so you can see it. The VU metering in this LD bar corresponds to the VU metering we have for camera 2. Let's try to turn this up and you can see that I can hit the red mark. So now we have peaking, definitely peaking. Okay, I turn it down and it goes down to nothing. And uh, over here we have uh, VU metering for the uh, master channel. So if I pull that all the way down, you see that we have no audio out and then I can pull it off. Uh, so we see we have audio out. That was the quickest way I could go through the uh, mini fly. This is one of the more advanced configurations because it really shows how much you can do with it. And this was just one device core, meaning that it just talks to an ATEM switcher, but you can combine it with video routers and cameras and recording decks and whatever you want because Unisketch is such a flexible operating system for the controllers it will allow you to control so many things in your broadcast facility.